Hey, you! Who? Me? Yeah, you. You're under arrest for attempted murder. Oh, act nine. I, uh, had not meant to do another retrospective video quite this soon. But, uh, in the last week or so, certain things have been flying around. Certain allegations and, uh, certain theories that, uh, kind of inspired this last minute video. And, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna name any names, I'm not gonna go into specifics, because I really don't want to drag my channel down into socio-political debate. And while I have made clear that I'm a supporter of Me Too and of speaking out, this one kind of gives me reason for pause, because it involves allegations of child abuse. And don't get me wrong, I love kids, and child abuse is nothing to joke about which is a part of why this one I have a little trouble with. Because I grew up in the satanic panic of the 80s and 90s when Dungeons and Dragons and Alice Cooper and Marilyn Manson and Ozzy Osbourne and so many others were all part of some evil uh, cultist plot to brainwash and abuse children. And it was all bullshit. And that kind of leads us to the topic at hand, the fellow that you saw in my little intro there, Dr. Frederick Wortham, a name that should be infamous to those who are unabashed in nerd culture, and for comic book fans in particular, because Dr. Wortham very nearly killed off comic books altogether. You see, in 1954, Dr. Wortham published a book that he titled Seduction of the Innocent, in which he declared that comic books were a root cause of juvenile delinquency and were full of subliminal messages that were brainwashing children into acting out in all sorts of outrageous ways. Yeah, before Dungeons and Dragons, before video games, before toy guns, there was comic books. Among other allegations that Dr. Wardham raised were that Batman and Robin were secretly gay. Yeah, now you know where that trope came from. That Wonder Woman would uh, inspire little girls to behave in masculine ways. Yeah. And most especially that horror and crime comics were teaching children to enjoy acts of violence. Unfortunately, Wardham's allegations in those days had just enough bite to actually draw some blood. It may sound ludicrous to us today, but I think you kind of got to remember that it was the very early days of the Cold War. For lack of a word, the United States had the jitters. You know, things like McCarthyism and upheaval over civil rights or feminism were right around the corner. People could kind of feel the ground shifting under their feet and it made a lot of people nervous. And so when Wordham raised these allegations, it definitely raised a lot of eyebrows. There actually were Senate and congressional hearings held to determine if comic books were influencing juvenile behavior. Ultimately, nothing came of it because how the fuck do you investigate something like that? But the very specter of government-imposed censorship spooked the comic book publishers enough that they decided to opt for the lesser evil of self-censorship. And so the Comic Code Authority was formed, which put in place a slew of restrictions and guidelines on what could and could not make it to the comic page. And how does this tie into horror, you might ask? Well, because one of the first and most prominent victims of the CCA's new restrictions was EC Comics, the original publishers of Tales from the Crypt, along with its sister titles, The Vault of Horror and The Haunt of Fear. 
And it's actually almost ironic because whatever we may remember from HBO's Tales from the Crypt series, it was pretty damn tame compared to what EC Comics was putting on their pages. And in point of fact, EC's own artists had raised this concern to their publishers that, you know, maybe we're going a little too far, maybe we should scale it back a bit. But for the time, they had a gold mine, so they kept churning it out and churning it out, and that just made them ready fodder for a worm like Wardham. Yes, I know I sound like Dr. Seuss. And in fact, right after the CCA was formed and the guidelines got put in place, the editor of EC Comics issued a very heartfelt letter in the final issue of Tales from the Crypt, in which he declared that he felt they simply could not continue publication under these new restrictions. So, Wordham pretty much doomed comic readers to decades without horror. Now, for sure, in the intervening years, there were various publishers who found ways to kind of maneuver around the CCA. Probably the most prominent would be Vampirella, who the original issues were actually published in an oversized magazine format, not unlike this on my wall, so they could claim, hey, we're not a comic book, we're a magazine, so the CCA's guidelines don't apply. But nonetheless, it would not be until the 1970s, better part of 20 years later, that even words like ghoul or zombie or ghost began to work their way back into the comic pages, and you began to see horror influences with characters like Swamp Thing or Morbius the Vampire. So Wordham basically damn near killed the comic book industry and totally banished horror from its pages to get a few headlines. Because modern day psychiatrists have gone through Wordham's various notes and uh, all of his uh, so-called research and deemed it all to be grade A, unfiltered bullshit. In the words of James Rolfe, that's bullshit. It turns out that Wordham handpicked his interview subjects, very often choosing children from broken homes or who were suffering from other mental or emotional problems, but of course neglecting to mention that in any of his findings. He also very heavily cherry-picked his interviews, pretty much deliberately to just reflect the results that he wanted, and using what I like to call the toilet paper fallacy, as in 100% of people who have cancer also use toilet paper, therefore toilet paper must be a root cause of cancer. Yeah, that's pretty much how Wordham put that forward. So it's with that in mind that I go back to saying that, yeah, the current allegations flying around, they're serious, and they shouldn't be taken lightly, but they should probably be taken with a really big grain of salt. Because the whole reason Worm focused on children was because he knew that would generate the most visceral response. And I can all too easily see that being the case here. Do we really need to have a ripple effect like he had happen to us once again? So it is with that said, and hopefully not going into too much and getting too many people pissed off, that I will uh, wrap this retrospective up. Thank you all for joining me, and thank you for subscribing, seeing 126. That's minuscule by YouTube standards, but to me, it feels like an achievement. Also, officially breaking 1,000 on Twitter. How people do it in weeks, I'll never know. It took me years. But I prefer the following grow slowly, but be people with a genuine interest and a genuine passion for horror, pop culture, literature, history, and other topics that I enjoy, and I hope that you can enjoy sharing with me. So, as always, I'm going to urge you people, please, take your precautions. Wear your mask, wear gloves, wash your hands, keep your distance. Also, a quick congratulation to Mr. Brody Lee on your title win. Join the Dark Order. And as always, folks, eat, drink, and be scary, and enjoy.